Following on from the previous video where we talked about creating a report from scratch, we have a data set. We've also used one of the tools of the many which we have available, um, which is the table. And then we just did a very brief amount of formatting. Well, what I'm going to do is expand on this and talk about the properties window because this will become your best friend. Um, you will find that you do have certain tool options in here where you can make things bold, italic, underline. How I did that, there's a little arrow just to the right here. The reason being is it's all scrunched onto one toolbar so if I move that one up there we go I can see see all the toolbar options so you can do bold and italic and underline I do tend to use these sort of four or five options here anything after that fact I tend to use the um, properties box um, the reason being is you get full scope and control from here the only problem is that depending on your screen resolution you may be constantly having to get real estate back of your screen just so you can get the information up um, but that that's fine it's totally up to you which way you're gonna do it but most of my videos I'm gonna deal with the properties window the reason pure and simply is that you're gonna start having to use this quite seriously so you better get used to it so the properties window is basically um, displayed in, in different ways. So you have a properties page which brings up this dialog box. This is new to 2008. In 2005 it didn't exist um, and it's just a way you can go through things easier. In fact if you're studying for um, any of the Microsoft Reporting Service exams quite often it points you to this dialog box approach rather than the properties which to me I, I find slightly bizarre because you'd think they'd want you to know all the nooks and crannies. Um, so we'll be dealing with this however in exam terminology it quite often will refer to here sometimes this will pop up inside other dialog boxes when we're doing things so you'll, you'll get used to both sides of the fence so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the properties dialog box in the guise of formatting but remember depending on the report item you choose the properties will differ so just bear that in mind so if I bring in a image um, box. Can you see immediately I get that particular um, dialog box up which brings up all the information. So if I cancel that I'm, I'm, I'm back out again but basically as soon as I do an image when I let go it brings up the image properties dialog box anyway which is the same as if I went through the um, properties box here. So the first thing is then when we click inside a table um, you'll see that it's telling you the name of the text box because we dragged and dropped and because it automatically identified what the field name should be it actually gives the field name of the text box there but notice the heading doesn't have a real name it just called text box 17 that one's 19 21 can you see what's going on 23 because it's doing 15 16 17 18 19 20 and so on but because we put those fields there it replaces the generic um, text box and number with the actual field name the reason is quite often you're not going to be fiddling around with this programmatically but you will be fiddling around with that programmatically so it's much better for you to actually define employ ID as that but if you wanted to I never do but if you wanted to we could actually change the um, text box here so somewhere in here there it is the name is text box 15 so I could just call it um, employee ID header I never do this I'm just showing this as a matter of example um, so from now on when I click away and click back again you'll notice now it's called employee ID header the idea is then easily on the drop down box you can see all of the objects that you have defined in here so if I want to go to email address bang it immediately takes me there so it makes life a lot easier when you come to doing formatting which is what we're going to do now in this case I'm going to break my own rule here by just dragging across the headings because this is a multiple select now so notice the properties drop down box is now blank reason being is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure for all of these cells so what am I going to do well I think we better have a bit of a background to it so let's have a look at the options here now you can actually go through it here they've categorized that's only because we've got the categorized button switched on if I turn that off or sorry click on the A to Z it now just puts everything in an alphabetical order and immediately one of the first ones is background color so let's just go on the black gown color and it gives us a list of all the different colors again this is different to 2005 because in 2005 it had names next to them now you have to hover over them I preferred the old way because I'm colorblind so I knew exactly what colors I wanted so I'm looking for a nice little gray and the one I always like is Gainsborough but 
it's just never there anymore. So I'm going to choose light grey. And there you go, it's immediately done those fields. Now, not to confuse the fields underneath here, they're highlighted to indicate that they're fields, not the formatting, which is a bit annoying considering I've just chosen exactly the same colour for the backgrounds. So, what else have we got? Well, um, border style, well, it says solid and the border width is 1 and the border colour is grey. So, hang on, let's just go and preview that. Do we have a grid? We do. So, I've actually chosen the same colour as the border. Well, there's other problems. The email address is a little bit on the um, short side, so we'll have to tidy that up as well. So I'll just drag that column wider and preview again. There you go, that looks a bit better. Still needs to be a bit longer. But let's move to there. And really we need to format the text in bold. So again, I'm going to highlight here. You can highlight by row as well. And at which point in here we go down and look for the font section. So that begins with F. There's font, which I find quite amusing because there's space before, space before, space after. I'm pretty sure F is before S in the alphabet. Um, and we'll choose font weight and make it bold. And there we go. That's that done. Now, I want to make the grid. Now, if I click on the box at the top left, this is very much like um, Word. If you select the overall, um, when you put borders on, you tend to do the outsides, not the insides. Well, it's slightly a bit fiddly in here. I'm going to change back to Categorized View. And what we're going to do is we're going to just um, scroll up and look for borders. And there they are in the border section. Um, the border style at the moment is set on none. So if I expand that, I can specify an individual border style for each bit. But it's left, right, top, bottom. What about the inside bits? Well, let me just choose, instead of none, let's make that um, solid. And also, let's, uh, well, the border color is already black, but I'm going to make this quite thick. Let's make it four points, which is ridiculous. But notice what it's done is it's only done the outside of the table. It's not done the innards. This, again, is what I was talking about in the previous video about selecting. You've got to highlight the cells because now can you see it's solid and it's on light gray. So I'm going to just change the border color to black. And let's preview it now and see what we've got. Not everyone's cup of tea. Let me just hide the output box. Um, but there we are. We've now got a thick four-point border around the outside of the table. And then we've got the thin one-point inside. Um, and there's our basic formatting done. We, we can just do that on all of the fields. Um, so really what you do now is you keep jumping back from design to preview. And you just keep expanding the fields. Can you double click? Well you can but there's no point because you've not got the content on the screen. You really need to have the content to be able to um, get the widths right. So quite often there's a lot of trial and error like job title is just way too small. So I'm going to just do that and preview again. And there we are. We've now got a report which is more or less, I'll let that one go, but more or less done. So the properties dialog box is very, very important because it controls absolutely everything you do in here. Sure, you could probably do it with the toolbar options, but quite often you'll be clicking on that undo button so many times. You're better off taking control of the actual document by using the properties box. So each section you click on, the properties change. Now, one final thing we're going to do is we're going to put a background color to this. Um, so I've just clicked on the page itself. And you can see I've got a background color of no color. I'm going to choose um, um, a light gray again, actually a darker gray. Let's um, choose that one. And now preview. You can see I've now changed everything to do the report. Now that is just purely an example. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to go back into the body section and from gray change it to no color again because I just want it um, more or less black and white. So at this point in this video I'm going to conclude because we've just talked about the properties and just doing basic formatting. There's a lot more to do. Such items as um, conditional formatting. If you've got values on your report you may want them to go red if they're negative and um, black if they're positive and all sorts of other things like um, alternate row formatting and so on. These will all be covered in other videos but first we've got to walk before we can run. So Hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video and I hope to see you on the next one.